All right, everyone, the cat is currently talking to the bird, pretending to be one. Uh, it's time to analyze what I think is likely to happen at this final presidential debate. It would be the third, but it's only the second, because the second one they decided to cancel it because Trump had COVID. For no reason, because he recovered a couple of days before the, the uh, debate was going to be held, so it was a pointless endeavor. What they should do is organize one final debate for like a week from now, like four or five days before the election. Why can't they do that? They could do it digital only. Trump would probably be game to at least have a third debate, even if it's in a shitty format. Not that it'll be any less shitty. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to be basically the same format as the first one. Uh, the only difference being that the microphone of the opponent is muted during the first two minutes of a response. I actually support that notion. My problem is that the muting will probably be used more often than that. The, the moderator will probably misuse the privilege of being able to mute Trump's microphone especially. Uh, you can look forward to that being potentially a thing. It will be a two-on-one debate. Trump will be fending off both Biden and the moderator. But ultimately will prevail, I believe, because he's got something really juicy to talk about, which is the Hunter Biden email scandal. A large swath of the United States either doesn't comprehend the scandal and why it's of import, and hopefully Trump can maintain coherence long enough to, to make that actual point, or they don't even know that it exists. Like this Bobulinski man, Tom, uh, Tony Bobulinski, second uh, Biden associate, has now corroborated the emails. He is saying he explicitly overheard the Bidens talking about business deals, the emails are real, this is extremely damning. By the way, it's, it's no coincidence that this was uh, is right before the debate. That being said, most Americans don't know that because most Americans don't read the New York Post, watch Breitbart, or watch a handful of, of you know, alt-tech-geared uh, content creators at this point who are actually talking about the issue. They watch CNN. They watch MSNBC. They watch Fox. Fox will have guests on that'll call it Russian disinfo or a Chinese disinformation operation or something. Right now, the legacy media is fixated on Rudolf Giuliani uh, being in a Borat skip, where he tucks his shirt in and they take a still from that and insinuate that he was trying to get with uh, someone that he believed was underage, which is completely false, even in the premise of the joke. And I'm going to talk about it to the audience. So this is Trump's final moment. This is, this is the final moment in which Trump will actually be able to get out to the public the fact that Joe Biden used his influence as VP to illegally squash a due investigation into a, a company that his son happened to be getting millions of dollars from. That is a major scandal. And it's not a phony one. It's not like what Trump tax returns. He paid too little in taxes by using ch tax incentives and, and, and uh, tax breaks that were handed to him by previous incarnations of the government long before he was in politics. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, he took advantage of the totally legal tax code and paid too little in federal income taxes. I wish I could pay just $750. Jesus, that would be wonderful. I could buy a house. Instead, I'll have to wait a number of years and make a down payment, I suppose. Uh, Kamala Harris swears she's going to get rid of $10,000 of my student loan debt. Some fucking good that'll do me because I'll pay that back out in taxes probably with Biden's tax hikes. Anyway... I would predict that ultimately Trump will prevail. Um, in fact, it'll, it's arguably better for him with the muting microphone thing because at least for that two minute segment, Biden will be able to make mistakes without being perturbed by Trump, which means it's taken off the table. Well, he's being antagonized and bullied, so he stammered a little bit. That's been the go-to excuse, really, uh, for the first debate. He can't make that excuse now. He can only blame himself. So this gives Biden uh, 12 total minutes to make mistakes. And of course, he has difficulty going 12 minutes without doing so. And it forces Trump to back off during those segments and stop windmilling and running around in circles verbally and actually stick to his focus and topics. I hope that he does. I do not expect the moderator to bring up the Hunter Biden email saga unless it's a softball directed at Biden. Well, there's a Russian disinformation campaign against you being led by evil tyrant Rudolph Giuliani. Uh, what do you have to say about these sleazeball hacks that are trying to say that you peddled influence as VP? In fact, they'll probably do that fairly quickly to try to keep Trump from uh, getting ahead of the story, so to speak. They probably will if they bring it up at all. You can look for them to try to silence Trump or redirect the conversation at all possible times that he mentions this issue. But this should be the number one issue for voters right now. 
Do you want a president who has been compromised by a bunch of Ukrainians and Russian energy investors and possibly by Beijing? Or do you want the president we've got now who by all accounts is reasonably independent? I like how they tried to get ahead of the story by saying, well, Trump has a Chinese uh, bank account. Well, number one, he's been divested in his businesses. So it's technically not sort of his bank account at this point. Number two, no shit. If I've got a skyscraper in Beijing, I probably have a bank account associated with the nation of China. That's not influence peddling, though. That's you holding money in one of your properties in that nation. That just I'm sure he has British bank accounts, too. He probably does have a Russian bank account. He's got properties in Moscow. He's probably got bank. He's got a Scottish bank account. He's probably got a Mexican bank account. Canadian. He probably has an account with TD Bank. Uh, that's the way that when, you, when you're worth three plus billion dollars and you have a hundred properties around the world, when you have condos and skyscrapers and, and golf clubs and resorts and shit, yeah, no shit, you have more than one bank account. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, fuck. The dude's worth $3.5 according to the most conservative estimates uh, uh, compiled by people that don't even like him. He's worth $3.5 billion. You think that he has all of those assets tied to one bank that could tomorrow fail? That would be the biggest business blunder of all time. I loved how they were trying to do that. And at the debates, Biden will avoid answering questions. If he's confronted about his son, he will default to starting to talk about Bo Biden, which he did in the first debate. He totally deflected. My son was in Iraq and he died of cancer. Very sad. We're not talking about Bo Biden. He's dead. <laughs> at some point, other people have gotten past that fact. Now we're talking about crack smoking son number two. The one who literally fucked the widow of your more deserving son and then cheated on her with a stripper because he was so high that at the time he thought it was okay to be naked on a Zoom call with a 14-year-old girl. <laughs> Apparently no charges forthcoming. Apparently that was a non-sexual situation. It was just an example of a crackhead being naked. I can actually believe that. I'm not saying that I think that Hunter Biden is, is that perverted. I just think he's a general degenerate. That being said, Rudy Giuliani says there were more pictures on there that were suggestive. Well, maybe not illegal, but it's pointing to a trend of behavior there. Maybe, get this, here's what I think. People who are on a lot of drugs make bad decisions. They do stupid shit, like accidentally leave their laptop full of incriminating evidence uh, at the repair shop, allowing the repair shop owner, who probably had a fucking Trump sign up in the fucking window, uh, allowing him to make a copy, send it to the FBI, but very wisely determined that it was a good idea to also send it to Giuliani's lawyer. Interesting times now, don't we live in? It looks like the Biden campaign might be shaken to its very foundation tonight. Again, Trump, don't Trump up or something. Give him a relaxing pill beforehand so that he can be more coherent. He needs to make the point more cogently because the, the people he needs to sway, the independent voters, they're not taken in by the usual Trump bans. I like him. I, I understand what he says, although I don't necessarily like his delivery sometimes, but he gets the point across to me because I analyze politics for a living and I sort of understand Trump. I understand Trump because I have to study his patterns of behavior in order to analyze the political situation involved with Trump. The average person doesn't, especially independent voters. If, if a voter right now is undecided, then it, it's because they don't know anything about the Hunter Biden story. If Trump can make, make the swing to them, make the pitch to them, hey, my opponent is provably corrupt. We've got all the fucking evidence. We've got several people corroborating that evidence. He's not even straight up denying it. He's just calling it a disinfo campaign. Wake the fuck up. Obviously, in not those words. Although it'd be interesting if he were the first presidential debater to say fuck on stage. He's the first one to address his cock size. He did that during the Republican primaries when queried by Marco Rubio about his hands, which people thought was hilarious at the time. What we need is a breakout moment for Trump sealing the deal on the election right now while he's ahead in my estimation again hillary and, and biden about the same in the top battleground polls with a higher enthusiasm gap this time with early voting results pointing to at least in some states a slight advantage for trump like in florida i think trump's already gotten it uh pennsylvania michigan not so much I think that he's ahead. I would give him a 75-80% chance of being re-elected today. But he can push that up to 90-95% just by having a really good debate performance and finally driving another nail into the coffin of the Biden camp by forcing him to address fully the issue of Hunter Biden. Right now, you've already got Biden apparently lagging off back down in the polls. 
Trump is evening the gap. You've got a week and a half until the election. It is enough time for a significant swing in polling. But Trump has got to do just a little bit more. And he can't flub it like it. The first debate technically was a wash for him. Biden technically won by default just by not shitting his pants on stage. Now that he's accomplished that, Biden just doesn't have to make any major mistakes in this one. The first time he had to make not even any moderate mistakes. He stammered off a couple of times and of course he contravened himself constantly and lied the whole time, but his voters don't care. Independent voters, if they haven't already decided, they're not, they don't apparently care that Biden's a chronic liar. But they probably will care about the Hunter Biden email story if they can get straight reporting on it. Be interesting. The moderator will almost certainly attempt to fact check Trump on the story. Um, say, well, that's, a, that's been debunked by the Washington Post. Oh, well, the Washington Post, owned by Bezos, he's a big fan of mine, says Trump. He can brush aside those attacks, but he's got to remain cogent. That's about all. Peace out.